Here we are under the Star Destroyer. Under this leaky LS bastard. Um, yeah. So, Buddy and I are going to be dropping the uh, oil pan here, which means you have to lift up the engine or you know, lift up the, uh, or drop the subframe rather. So, you're going to be going up under there, dropping some bolts down. Got to drain the oil pan, of course. And uh, see what kind of debris you got in there. You got to clean that out. Put it back together because if anything did fall within that oil pan, of course, you don't want it circulating back up into like the suction tube and causing more uh, destructive damage down the road. Right. This is what uh, LS has succumbed to. Once before, um, Buddy and I ended up lowering that pan just a little bit, that oil pan just a smidge and stuck black silicone around it because it was leaking. Like I would clean under the car and then there'd just be oil everywhere again, so. But it's inevitable. These LSs are notorious for leaking. All right, what I'm doing here is I'm cutting, I'm making what they call a chaser bolt so you can clean out the bolt holes that you put the uh, cylinder head bolts into, you know, so you're gonna be torquing these down. And those cylinder bolt holes, you get pretty dirty with whatever kind of Loctite um, stuff that the factories put on the bolts. So it'll get gunked up from the old ones plus whatever falls in there when you take the cylinder heads off. The cylinder heads can get filled with like oil or uh, coolant. So I'm gonna have to blow all that stuff out while cutting on. So I'm cutting grooves into these bolts as best as I can, just using this little hand tool since I don't have a grinder. And uh, I got a fan set up out here because this thing is going to blow sparks right at me. So I just, just going to be an attempt to uh, do this and try to keep the sparks from hitting me. All right, so people talk about cleaning out the thread ball holes, make yourself a thread chaser. There's all kind, you can hear that. There's coolant in there. See what happens with this bolt on the end. The harness in the way there. Ooh, look at all that. All that coolant that just came out of there. So, make yourself that thread chaser. You wanna get down in there. And you see how wet this is right here from all that coolant that was down in the thread bolts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take paper towels, I'm going to wad it up, I'm going to individually clean out each of those holes until I get all the coolant out, and then I'm going to still run this thread chaser in there. I'm taking very thick paper towels and watered it up, and I'm going to go ahead and twist it down into that hole. It's going to soak up whatever's in there. The reason why you want to make sure the holes are clean and there's no liquid in it because you can uh, it's a term waterlog when you go ahead and bolt the heads down to torque spec you could build up pressure within these bolt ports and crack the block because of the pressure just gets built up yeah that's it's wet It'll be cooling all over it yeah it's definitely cool and I can smell it also smells like maybe it's been mixed with some oil. It does not have a pleasant scent. So I'm going to do this repeatedly until those holes are dry. There's a few paper towels right there that I have cleaned out bolt ports with. Bolt holes when I uh, went ahead and installed that head there. So just letting those kind of hang out there as you can see just letting them soak up whatever's in there right, so I'm going to be using the chaser bolt it was all nice and clean went ahead and brushed off the junk on there from the last times I used it wiped it down, make sure it was dry I am going 
slow. You don't want to strip any threads. There's a little bit of gunk on there. It'll be kind of hard to see in this lighting. But not much, because I've already gone through this one, but that's a little shiny there. See some gunkness on it. So I'm going to clean it off and I'm going to repeat that process and that's why you want a thread chaser bolt. So the re other reason for the making a thread chaser from one of the older boats bolts there, because you can see it comes with factory thread locker on it. This factory thread locker does flake off and into the threads of those bolt holes. So running this through over and over again until it's cleaned out is a necessity so you don't over torque anything, cause any damage within those threads. And with the liquids being inside those portholes, um, make sure you don't get waterlogged and cause that backup pressure that'll crack the block, especially since if you have an, L, an actual LS motor uh, that's made out of aluminum. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to put in the lifters into the lifter tray. They can only go in one way. As you see these holes here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in to where those holes are facing each other after they are put into the trays. You have these little holes here, there and there. So just do that with all four in all the lifter trays. Lift the tray of bolts, 10 millimeter. I take them down to nine foot pounds or 106 inch. There we go. This torque wrench is so smooth, it's kind of hard to tell sometimes. But the audible click is not really that loud either. There we go. That's all it takes. So, don't worry about if I lift the trays move. They're supposed to flex a little bit. That's what they do. And this uh, head in there is going to be fun since the engine is still in the car. I'll be very careful, try not to scratch any of the mating surfaces. Such a weird angle. When you get a new head bolt kit, you're going to get three different sizes. So, two bolts, you're actually going to get four bolts in total, but two bolts per head. These middle ones, see here, this is a large one, and then you got this that goes on the top of the heads. So, these two are going to go in what is considered bolt holes nine and ten which are in the middle of the heads. So this shorter bolt is going to be considered 
number 10, and then it's going to be on the total opposite side. It's going to be considered 9, which I'm definitely going to have to use a flashlight to see back there since it's super dark. Well, this is it. I'm calling it a night. So both heads are on. They're just not torqued down. Problem is, my torque wrench, my three torque wrenches, a little hard to deal with. You need 22 foot pounds to be able to bolt or torque those bolts down that are in the head. This thing died on me. I went to the store, got some batteries for it, and only to find out it actually won't go past 30. I'll oh, turn on. It won't go 30 pound, past 30 pounds or under 30 foot pounds. Just says stop. <laughs> I forgot the torque rating on this thing when I bought it, but it is the industrial one. Because um, I wanted one that went well over 100 foot pounds and that hits about 250. So it's good for like lugging wheels and anything above 30 foot pounds, but uh, no big deal. I'm just happy I got this far. So, yeah, as of now. Because my buddy and I were trying to lift up the motor. And we're going to use these that you these little clips right here, these mounts. So that way we can suspend the motor while we drop the K member so we can drop that oil pan. Anyway, thanks for sticking with me on this guys. I really appreciate it. Go ahead, hit that thumbs up, subscribe, even though I'm not monetized, I don't care. Uh it just feels good to have people who watch and appreciate what I do and maybe you can learn something from me I'm not the best teacher but I do what I can if you have questions you know I'll do my best to answer them down in the comments go ahead and uh, hit me up I appreciate that thank you so much this is chemical spore out